Okay, today we're going to be doing pinball on the NES. Now there really isn't that much to say about the game, so I'll keep talking about it to a minimum. But what I'm really looking forward to is talking about the Kevtris. So this is going to be my test play of the... Um, it's an NES front loader that's been modded with an any with the a HDMI conversion and uh, this one uses the top of the line Kevtris HDMI conversion kit which they're I don't know if they're out of production but they're becoming harder and harder to come by so uh, I was able to find a seller that had a NES that already had the HDMI installed in it and I'm just testing it out and seeing if I can get this to do what I want it to do. Now, previously, I'd been doing Duke Nukem Forever, the pinball machine, on the Xbox 360, trying to get some HDMI gameplay footage of, of that, do some score chasing on the Duke Nukem pinball machine. But... If you've been paying attention, I really haven't been having much luck with it. It's not coming out the way I want it to. The footage is severely sluggish and laggy, so I'll get back to figuring out how to get all that taken care of. For now, we're going to be working on testing out the, um, the HDMI modded NES front loader. It looks good. It's definitely 1080. I'm noticing a very small input lag. Barely noticeable though. Not much of a problem. And the good news is now we're going to be able to do any game that I have a cartridge of or can get a cartridge of, we're going to be able to do footage of it in HDMI and have it look really sharp. And I'm obviously not having a very good game. So maybe I'll do another game, another uh, game of pinball. And I have to say, the HDMI modded NES with the Kevtris HDMI conversion, it was not cheap. It was definitely an investment. But like I said, the I don't know what's going on with Kevtris if they're not producing the conversion kits anymore. Oh, that's game over. But retro gaming community, they're starting to get a little nervous because there was a while where they were really cranking them out and it wasn't um, it wasn't that hard to get your hands on one if you wanted one, but for whatever reason uh, they've been sold out of the NES HDMI conversions for a while The process of getting an NES HDMI modded, it was quite a process. You had to, first you had to get a hold of the HDMI conversion, so you would have to go to the Kevtris website and order one. You'd have to have either an NES front loader or an NES top loader. And then you would have to get in touch with one of the... You could do the um, installation yourself if you have like skills with soldering and you know what you're doing. But it's very risky because not only are you going to potentially wreck the NES, but you could also potentially wreck the HDMI conversion kit.
but there are shops on the internet where if you are willing to send them an HDMI conversion kit and either an NES front loader or an NES top loader and pay shipping, they would do the installation for you. So it's quite a process to get one of these HDMI conversion kits installed. I was fortunate. I found a seller on the internet that, you know, had one already installed, ready to go. And they wanted a pretty fair price for it. Because it was used, it wasn't top dollar. But this was definitely an investment. It's something that, um... I mean, now I'm going to be playing any and every NES game that I'd like on uh, my NES HDMI. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling, though, because it means that the top loader that I've been using forever and a day, I've had an NES top loader that, of course, used, you know, the coaxial hookup and I got over 20 years of service out of that top loader and now it's basically retired the only use I'll have for it from now on is going to be I have an old CRT television in the basement and I'll if I'm in the mood to play any zapper games I'll hook up the top loader and play some zapper games on the CRT television I guess this also means I'll be getting slightly less use out of my NES Mini, which I've been using because it's HDMI. Unfortunately, it only has a few games on it. And in case anyone's wondering, my high score on pinball is 161,150. And so far, I haven't even come close to that. So now you're going to see me doing a lot more score chasing. I'm going to be doing Burger Time, Rampage, Paperboy, Donkey Kong 3, Elevator Action... Wrecking Crew, Tetris, you name it. There's a couple of other games I'll probably get around to as well. Like, I'll probably do the entire Mega Man series. I've already done two because it was on the NES Mini, but now I'll be able to do the rest of the Hexology and HD. Basically, the pop possibilities are endless at this point. Okay, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, I can go ahead and talk about pinball. This was a game that if you had it in your NES library when you were a kid, you probably didn't think much of it because... It wasn't exactly pushing the Nintendo to its limits. It you know, like, you look at games like the Mega Man games, the Super Mario Brothers games. You know, those are games that are, at the time they were coming out, they were much more ambitious. There was a lot more to do in them. But Pinball was a black box title, and obviously it's a pretty simple game. So if you had it, you were probably looking at Envy and your friend who had The Legend of Zelda in their collection. But now in my 
you know, older age, I've come to really appreciate pinball. You know, it's perfect for a quick play. You pop it in, play it for a few minutes, try and get a better score. If I put if I put in a copy of like Super Mario Brothers 3 or Mega Man 3 or whatever, I know that I'm going to be playing it for a couple hours. And I find that I'm not going to be doing anything all that different. You know, I feel like when I play it, I'm doing the same things that I've done over and over. So I've become really um, fond of score chasing games. And pinball is most definitely a score chasing game. You can put it in for 30 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, you know, and you're challenging yourself. You're trying to get a better score than you got last time. All right, so the trick to pinball is you want to get the cards flipped over because then you get a like a bumper underneath your paddles. And it basically means the only way that the ball is going to be lost is if it goes underneath one of your paddles when you have it raised or over the sides. And you can get extra bumpers on the sides by hatching the eggs. And that's how I was able to get such a high score. The other trick with pinball is on that bottom part of the pinball machine, right up there in the top right corner, if you can get the ball to go in there, you know, you get the little mini game with Mario. And the whole point of um, doing that is rescuing the princess. But even if you fail, you get to restart, or excuse me, the ball will come out on the top end. And you always want to keep the ball on the top part of the machine to rack up as many points as possible. I think I'll probably squeeze in one more game after this just because I'm doing so terribly. I haven't been able to show the Mario minigame. I haven't been able to get the cards flipped over. Okay, so at least we're going to show the Mario minigame. And I'm probably not going to be able to rescue the princess. I've done it before, but it's not easy. The, you have to have a lot of luck with the way the ball is ricocheting around. This is definitely a game that requires a lot of patience, luck, and skill. And if I can get... Okay, I got the extra bumper for the top, so able to show off a couple of things. And I, um, because I got over 50,000 points, I got an extra ball. At 100,000 points, the flippers become invisible, and they don't become visible again till 150,000 points. And something that's really cool about this game, and I think it's true of... Oh, that was so foolish. I think it's true of all the games, or most of the black box games. No music. There's that great line in... Um, it's one of the early AVGN videos where he's talking about playing old Atari games. But old video games from that era... Where there wasn't much music or no music at all... When you're playing them, you know, if you play them at night and there's no music, just the very basic sound effects of the game, 
you know, sitting in the glow of the TV. You know, that's how games like these are meant to be played. I'd like to get over a hundred thousand. I don't think it's gonna happen though. What I'd really like to do is get all the cards flipped over. That's probably the most difficult thing to do in this game. No. Okay, so 80, I'm sorry, 87,820 points. And this was just a test run. Just testing out the NES HDMI. And it looks like it crashed on me anyway, so... That's all we're going to get. So hopefully this footage comes out okay. We'll get back to the Xbox 360 stuff once we play around with the settings a little bit. But we're also going to be doing some NES HDMI stuff. So thanks for checking in, and we'll get back to it soon.